Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here. I do hope you're having a great day. I woke up this morning and one of the first things I usually do is grab from my phone and check and make sure that the world is still orbiting the way that it should. Had a message that um, there is a fellow by the name of Greg that is facing some serious physical challenges. Greg, our thoughts and prayers are with you. We need all the good trumpeters that we can get. And good trumpeters need all the good mouthpieces they can get. A friend of mine up in Canada is putting me in a difficult situation. She uh, had a mouthpiece shipped to me. I usually check them out if they don't like to ship international, and then I'll forward them on to Heather. This one might not be making its way up to Canada, though. It's an excellent player. Trent Austin took an Alcas 127, I think is what it's called, and um, said he made just a few changes to it. I, I really wish you could see down in this mouthpiece. It's not, it's not visibly uh, impressive, but this thing has got a open, powerful sound to it that is really impressive. Uh, it's a relatively shallow cup, but then it feels like it's just so hard to see. And I don't know if this is Delrin or um, one of the derivatives, you know, of the plastic family. Uh, great feel on the lips, though. Uh, acrylic or Delrin, if I called it one, it would almost certainly be the other. But it does have an open throat, maybe not what they'd call a uh, dual cup, but it uh, it opens so nicely. It's a 27 drill, but man, it's got such a excellent sound. Of course, uh, I've been playing some Reaper mouthpieces lately, and unfortunately, I'll have to send them up to Heather. But um, our friends at Reaper have got, he's got a rim on this. If you ask him what he put on Heather's rim, it's the um, MC cup um, but whatever rim he's got on there, that thing is just absolutely fantastic. This Alcas is a little rounder. Uh, the size is probably close to a Bach 7 diameter, maybe a little bit larger than that. Uh, feels a bit rounded. If you play a 5, you could probably play it as well. But, um, of course, that's like a, uh, what is it? it, would be a GR64, a Reeves 41, a Yamaha 11, whatever that uh, relates to. Medium-sized mouthpiece is uh, really what I call that. Just a great sound. Now, it's, it's about eight hours earlier in the day than I like to play, and I've uh, worked at it for a while. My lip is, it's having problems waking up. So I'm going to play with something that's uh, easy for me to play. Give me that old-time religion. Try and give you an idea, but just a marvelous job. Trent did a superb uh, work on this mouthpiece. If you can get one, I think it's well worth your time. Um, it gives a very, very open sound. I don't know if it's bright, but it's, it's so powerful that uh, it could certainly be forced into a brightness. And uh, just hope you enjoy this. See uh, Trent's take on a Alcas 127. 1-27 is what it is. I'm playing this with an Edwards Gen 2 Stellar horn. Anything that I've got for sale at the moment, the Gen 2 is for sale. I really ought to take it off the market and, and uh, put another horn or two that I've got up. But any horns or items that I've got, uh, if you go down to the comments, it'll be the first line there. Give you a link to Reaper mouthpieces too. If you've got a, you know, if you like a Yamaha 11, but uh, you like the box seven rim, something like that, uh, I think he's got a wonderful way of working with uh, his uh, setup to give you what you like. All right, the Edwards Gen 2, Trent Austin's take on an Alcas 1-27.
shelf piece. Now this is, again, it's a Reaper copy of a Warburton MC cup with a different rim put on it. And um, it in itself is a very fine mouthpiece. Just for contrast, we'll play that. Then I've got a Monet here that I'll play in a GR as well. Okay, the thing about these acrylic or Delrin rims, uh, I think they do share one thing in particular. As soon as you put them to your lips, they're warmed up. Just a great feel. And uh, I can do about as well range on those as anything I've ever played. Um, very, very interesting, um, very interesting fabric. Okay, this is a GR64MS. It's the first mouthpiece I could remember. I was playing it with an Adams A5, and when I put the two together, I just had the Adams A5 for a while and got this G4, or um, excuse me, GR64 medium shallow piece. And when I put them together, I thought I was going to wake the dead. And um, really powerful. The the first time that I played this Alcas, it, it just reminded me so much of this. And here's a mouthpiece. I'll probably give it its own video later, but um, got this from a friend off of Trumpet Herald. Um, Eric, thank you very much. It is a Monet BLM. It's about a seven diameter rim. Um, fairly shallow, not quite as shallow as a, a GR shallow, but still nonetheless. But it does have a bigger drill size. And uh, I think we're looking at about a 23 or 24. And on some of the horns that I've got, um, like I've got a lovely Olds Mendez I just got in, uh, this mouthpiece with that horn, it's just almost too bright. With the Edwards, which has got a big bell on it, and a heavier horn, magnificent horn, I think it probably will be a better match as far as general playing. But this is the Monat BLM. All right. Boy, I'm tempted to try and really see how far I can go up, but I generally wind up pulverizing my lip for the day and um, embarrassing myself at the same time. So we'll stay where we are. Four mouthpieces, very, very fine. If you haven't tried a, a Delrin or acrylic cup, they are really something else. Um, almost a therapy if your lips are bothering you. And uh, they just seem to um, be a little easier to play. Uh, I don't feel myself pressing so much. One thing about them, of course, they warm up very quickly. They're extremely light. They really take a lot of weight off of your horn setup. And uh, maybe that's one reason that I do find them interesting. As always, folks, it's a pleasure to spend time with you. Love the comments, thoughts that you might have. 
do take care of yourself and someone near you.